Welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your cards for March. This is truly an activation period. It is a time of integration. It is a time of advancement and movement and kind of all of those things that we were hoping would start to happen maybe even months ago. Now I will tell you that March is gonna feel a lot different and it should. We are moving out of the Saturn Uranus square. Those planets still remain in a square all month and really all year, so that energy stays with us. But things are starting to settle down. Now the interesting part of this month for you in particular, Virgo, is the very end of February, that full moon in your sign is going to be a catalyst for change. And the thing is, because it makes this trine to Uranus and because this is your third house, ninth house activation, or I'm sorry, sixth house, ninth house activation, this can feel really mental. Now, doubly because your card, which is kind of encapturing your energy this month, it's that of the third house. Card number 27, breaking down to a nine. These are mental places. And March is going to move us into a softer place. One of the reasons that I chose the cards I did this month is because there's something very romantic and Neptunian about these particular cards to me. There's somewhat of a haze. They feel a little dreamy. Things are kind of out of proportion and it feels as if we're in that Neptune haze. Now, a couple of things to talk about when we go through this transit, when you have the Sun and Venus moving through your seventh house, is there's an emphasis of your needs, your wants, and sometimes in comparison to what you give and to what others bring you. And it's really about where you belong. Sometimes we can build sandcastles when we're in a Neptune transit. And you have certainly been dealing with Neptune in the seventh house for several years now. But this year in particular is a square to the nodes, which are in your 10th house. 10th house, 4th house axis is where we belong. It's where we come from and it is where we are destined to land. And Neptune is creating this haze, making it really kind of tricky to figure out where we want things to go. Maybe we're feeling like we can't trust the things that we see with our own eyes. We can't trust our own judgment. And that third house says to me that the more that you are in your mind this month, the more Neptunian, the more confusion will you will invite in. I don't really think that this month has a lot to do with the logical things. Now, ironic for you, because this is a sixth house, ninth house transit, this is really all about that self-mastery, that discipline, the ability to organize and prioritize your time and do the things and satisfy the people and kind of be able to be in all the places. You are probably a pretty constant channel of energy for a lot of people this month. And so March might just seem electric. It might seem very busy. It might seem like there's an awful lot of communication going on. And yet, the overall energy of your reading is a lover's card. And that is everything to do with Venus in the seventh house. Now, one of the things that I was picking up when I looked at this cards is there's an emphasis of kind of 
two things. We have the lovers with their backs turned to each other. We have this center card of your reading, awakening card number 20. Um, and there's just an emphasis on two different directions. Maybe it's two different versions of self. Maybe it's two different things that you're really not sure if you are fully prepared to choose. Maybe you don't feel like you fully understand. And March is a time of integration and it's a time to stop hesitating. And if the Saturn Uranus square didn't do you in in February, if it didn't make you look at things a little bit differently, because Saturn is all about the barriers and Uranus is about breaking the rules, but within the limits. So we do have to apply our intelligence. We do have to kind of think about the consequences and it is a very karmic time. We have a new moon coming up in your seventh house in the middle of the month. And all of this energy is all about who you are and where you belong and who belongs with you. We have the five of swords as a first card out. And the second that I saw this, I saw kind of this bird swooping over this man's head and there's kind of a lot of things aiming at him and it felt attacked and you look here a fiery climax approaches full moon in aries and right below this five of swords is this queen of wands kind of with her hands out and i get this feeling like i really wouldn't want to mess with her and maybe there's a lot of ways that you feel like you're under attack in 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 March, maybe there's a lot of reasons why you have to have your defenses up. Now, I'm not sure if it's like outside people. You know, this Five of Swords can just be like a lot of hiccups at work. It could be just a lot of frustrating stuff going on. We do have Mercury direct but still kind of covering that old ground so in a way we're getting a, a second chance to deal with situations to make those phone calls to close those projects out um, really finalizing the details and that process may not be easy when i see a five of swords there could also be elements of feeling competitive which means we're comparing ourselves to others and this could be a mental place where we're like you know, why didn't we get that done? Why aren't we farther along in this? Why can't we get relationships right? Why can't we, you know, and this could really be internal. And because it's a full moon in Aries card right next to it, the emphasis is on you and the full moon, trining Uranus and squaring Saturn means you know things have to change. And regardless of how or why this Five of Swords energy acts out, it's going to force you to make the changes. So let's talk about what we're changing right here, the center of this reading. Uh, we've got the Eight of Swords, the Awakening card, and the Three of Wands. And this is really all about that inner voice really all about expanding your beliefs ninth house uranus we're searching for breakthroughs we're breaking through barriers we are capable of doing more than we ever imagined we are capable of having more than we would have ever asked for and yet there's this eight of swords where we put ourselves in restraints we hold ourselves back we don't express ourselves we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable maybe we're not voicing our needs maybe we're not talking back to this five of swords and saying no this is my sacred time this is my sacred space because 
because this hangman, it, it shows me that there's a part of you that is kind of frozen, not knowing which direction to go, not understanding which path to choose. Five of Swords can be a lot of outside influence. It could be a lot of people with a lot of advice, not even necessarily bad intentions. Queen of Swords, maybe there's a lot of people in your life saying, no, you shouldn't do that. No, it's not a good time to take that risk. And so you keep yourself in this place of being, of listening to other people's expectations and yet this card right here in the middle, it's like this knowing, knowing that the change has to occur, knowing that you have to, that you have to grow, that you have to ascend at this time. It's the knowing, it's the calling. Middle of March, things start to really move. Things start to pick up because we're breaking through these barriers. Early on in the month, a fiery climax approaches. There are things that are happening. There's conversations that we're having. They're causing us to look at things differently, to reframe our life and to say, what do I want? And even to say, this isn't enough, or I deserve better. And sometimes with the hanged man, again, this, this card of Pisces, there's this feeling like you have to do these things or be these certain, fulfill these needs of other people. You know, it's a martyr energy. Maybe there's a part of you, Virgo, that feels like you have to sacrifice something in order to make progress. And that's kind of the exact opposite of what the universe truly wants you to do. The universe is never gonna ask you to sell yourself short. It's never gonna ask you to settle for things. Like never once in a million years will you hear any spiritual person tell you, well, don't ask for too much. The truth is, the awakening is how very little we've asked for to begin with. And I love that the Queen of Wands is here because it tells me that you have what it takes to make the changes. And the changes really only require the desire for things to be different. The desire to allow this to happen. And I look at this awakening card, card number 20, breaking down to a two, along with the lovers, the integration, the masculine and the feminine energies coming together. There is an integration. There is a melding. And somehow with this eight of wands, it creates this immense form of freedom. I think this is you breaking free from this hanged man. Maybe you're looking for answers. Maybe you're looking for clarity. Maybe you're pushing because the Queen of Wands will push. Queen of Wands is always going to let everybody know what she needs and what she expects. And she also knows how to follow her instincts clearly. Clearly she is open to the opportunity. And I feel like this queen of wands is extremely open to the opportunity. Sometimes when we're in an energy of contrast, like we, we have been all through 2020, like, how could these situations possibly get worse? Why wouldn't we want things to get better? Why wouldn't we want 
to heal and yet we find ourselves we find the world we find the collective doing exactly the opposite things that we need common sense and logic in order to heal and so uranus and taurus is really going to take its time it's going to show you where you're stuck it's going to show you why things aren't working and the thing with the awakening card is that you're not going to have much of an option right like it's not really a choice anymore i think you are just simply on this path towards freedom for a simpler life maybe it's as simple as finding creative ways to lessen the the time it takes you with your daily tasks you know maybe the things that you're looking for virgo are just some free time and space time to create time to dream maybe all virgo wants is a couple quiet hours over the weekend to read a book and relax Because I get the sense with this Eight of Wands and this Wanderer underneath. I get a sense that what Virgo truly craves, what she really wants and desires, or he, is to just be able to operate in the unknowing. Now remember I said this Queen of Wands is somebody who is open, open to the awakening, open to the growth, open to the next chapter, the new thing. And that's funny because as you are open to, there's this Knight of Swords staring you down. I don't feel any bad energy coming from this Knight of Swords. In fact, it feels like it's creative energy. It feels like it's inspiring, maybe even a little aspirational. Maybe you have somebody really wonderful in your life. Maybe it's somebody who represents a younger feel or younger vibration in some way. And Virgo, I'm wondering if you're not just kind of going through your thing this month, like you're having this profound experience. You're growing so tremendously, and yet this Knight of Swords feels like they need to rescue you. This could be an actual person that's kind of like always there with advice and wise words. Well, I would do it this way. Well, you should do it that way. Or maybe just let me do it for you. And this seems to probably irritate you a little bit. You know, because I feel like the Queen of Wands is like, back the F up. Like you got all this noise coming from over here and then you have this thing over here and they seem to all be coming directly at you. And this is you saying, Jesus, I, I need a break. I need an answer. I need something better. I need a solution to these issues. Queen of Wands is able to bulldoze her way through the obstacles. Of course, she's got the determination. She's got, she can get the cooperation of other people. She can attract the things that she needs to make things happen. But it doesn't really matter if she's exhausted and these aren't even the things she wants anymore anyways. And you, this Queen of Wands, here facing the same direction as this Three of Wands. These are the things that you want after the entire environment, after your mind, your psyche has been changed. As you have reframed the story from being the victim and having to do all the things that everybody needs and expects from you, you've gained this freedom, you've taken the steps, you've, you've used your voice, messages. Probably gonna have to defend yourself this month 
probably going to have to explain to some people that you do appreciate them and you appreciate their help, but you got this. And because there is an opening, because there is a new direction, this hanged man, he gets that enlightening moment. And all of a sudden, things open up that you didn't even know were possible. Mars moves into Gemini, inching closer and closer to that north node in your 10th house, which is a real moment of destiny for you, Virgo. This is big. And this month, this Pisces energy of surrender, surrendering the control, surrendering the need to keep it all together, to be all the things for all the people. And you get to release some burdens. You get to release some stress, this three of wands. is like the planning and the preparation so that you could go on this next journey. The Wanderer, card of zero, the fool. And I love how he's very like Picasso-like, kind of not really fitting in, showing this really deep, weird contrast between him and his environment. And I like the way that he is kind of on the rock representing this Capricorn energy, Capricorn in your fifth house, this creativity, this need for fun, for joy, for just plain entertainment. I think this is Virgo realizing that they're just ready for a whole new adventure. And I do really get the feeling, Virgo, that you are preparing yourself for a new journey. I think there might be people that you have to let down. There might be situations that you have to leave in the past. Maybe it's friends, maybe it's family members that, you know, talk about politics and really wear at your nerves. Maybe it's bad habits like overindulging on the news and all the negativity that's going on. And, and it's almost as if you're invited, maybe even by a little bit of a universal shove, to let it all go. And whenever I think of March, I think of Lent, right? There's something that we have to give up, something that we have to sacrifice. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that we love and cherish. Like we're not saying give up your children for a month. We're not saying, you know, give up food for a month. But there might be some kind of a sacrifice that you have to make, maybe just in the form of self-discipline, maybe in the form of finding a solution. And then once you make it, the solution comes so quickly and the obstacle is just suddenly removed. And then I can promise you guys, as Mars makes its way into Gemini, it is going to shock us how much movement can take place in such a little time. How much progress we can make, how many plans we can make, the rate in which we meet people and we create plans and we start new things. Fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. We are getting ready for that new spring. And for you, it's about the letting go. It's about the making things easier. It's about looking forward to the future. Now we have this card down here and it's next to this Knight of Swords. Attack, pain, fear, judgment, and any form of separation are merely calls for help. So pay attention to that thing this month. Pay attention if you're feeling attacked or triggered in some way. If 
feeling like somebody isn't being respectful. You don't necessarily even have to say anything, but note it. Pay attention. Pay attention that the words that you have in your mind, you know. I was paying it I was thinking about this the other day. I had screwed up the dates for something for my son's school and I was so aggravated with myself. Like I was really, really hard on myself. And then I thought, well, if my son had made this mistake, I would have never reacted that way. I would have never thought those things of him. So why is it okay to beat up on ourselves that way? And if we're not the one beating up on ourselves, why are we allowing it, you know, certainly from other people? Even if they do have good intentions, it's okay to be triggered by it. And you have control over your reaction. But these are messages, third house messages. All of these things that irritate you, that trigger you in any way. Somebody says to you, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do this? And your first instinct was, oh my God, no, that's crazy. I would never do that. Pay attention to that fear, that block that you naturally put up. It doesn't mean you have to change it, but just be curious and open and look at those things. Judging for sure. And any form of separation, that means any voice inside your head that says you're not good enough or you don't deserve that or that would never work out for you. Any kind of negativity that you carry within you creates this eight of swords feeling of being trapped. Like you're not in control of your circumstances. Like life will just have to be this irritating forever. It doesn't have to be. These instances are a call to help. It's the universe showing you what needs to be healed. And really the acknowledgement is enough. The awakening card. It's, it's not like you have to expose this pain or expose this block and then do all of this work and you know go on some kind of soul journey no you just simply have to acknowledge it you acknowledge it within yourself and then you immediately make space eight of wands and i get the feeling that whatever you're making space for is maybe a little bit different you know, we still have an emphasis of Aquarius. We still have Saturn and Uranus, I mean, Saturn and Jupiter there, still making that square to Uranus energy. We might be finding ourselves kind of embracing the weirder side of life, doing the weirder things, trying things that are a little bit out of character. And I think if you're getting that pull, if you're getting that instinct this month, you should certainly follow it. Card number 46, Peacock Spirit, let it shine. If there are any quirky, weird things about you, now is the perfect time to like wear it as a badge of honor. And I oftentimes look at this Peacock Spirit and it feels like radical self-acceptance. Oh, I get it. I don't have to hate myself because I have big feet or a big nose. Like I still deserve to be loved. And, and, and when you stop telling your, yourself those ridiculous stories, then the whole world opens up to you. You were the only one who thought that. Peacock spirit, let it shine. Breaks down to a 10. Emphasis on that north node and Mars in your 10th house. This is a big transit. It's like the universe is like clearing the driveway for you. 
And I think that's what March is all about. Like we're all going to bury out of the snow, clear the driveway. Suddenly the sun comes out. You start to see cement. You start to breathe in fresh air again. It doesn't hurt so bad to leave your house, you know, if you're somebody who's been kind of cooped up in the in the northern hemisphere. And I think the difference is when you start to love and respect yourself and when you stop letting go of all that other stuff, you start to really enjoy what you see. You start to really love who you become. And because you're at that vibration, you attract other people that are really loving it too. It's kind of like a calling into your tribe. It's kind of like a finding your niche. Sisterhood of the Rose, beauty and devotion, priestess, mystic, and teacher. Again, it's not going to be about like the logical stuff. We have all this energy in Pisces. It's not going to be about the balancing of the books and the details, even though it's in your sixth house. It's going to be softer. It's going to be harder to navigate. You're going to have to feel your way through this. And there it means you're going to have to trust yourself. And it also means you're going to have to let go of some things. And the best way to do that is to have faith. Sisterhood of the Rose. Your inner beauty is blooming. The more authentic you become, the more beautiful you become, the more opportunities unfold for you. Simply because you believe in yourself. Really beautiful, powerful reading this month, Virgo. I feel like it's going to be a very, very special time period for a lot of us. And I certainly hope that you find the clarity and you experience the peace that you need. All right, guys. I hope you take care. I will see you again for your April reading. Bye.